I'm going to be pickling thistle stalks today, and I thought I'd bring you guys along and sh or show you guys how to do it. And for those of you who know me, you know that I don't normally do selfies, and there's a main reason for that. A lot of times, um, you spend more time looking at me than looking at what you should. Anyway, I do. And so I tend not to do selfies all that much, and we're going to give this a try, see if I like it. If I like it, then that's fine. If I don't, then that then this will be my only selfie I ever do, uh, which may be the case. Anyway, um, uh, we're, we're pickling thistles today. Uh, the, it's, the sun's out right now, but we're kind of between storms right now. Uh, we are officially flooded in right now. Uh, the valley road is flooded over and there's no uh, public access to our valley. I can't get in, or no one can get in and I can't get out. So I'm stuck here, which is a good thing in my opinion. I love being stuck back here. Um, so, but I need something to do, so I'm going to pickle some more thistle stalks. This is the time of the year to pickle this thistle stalks. I'm also, if anybody notices, uh, if anybody knows my home, this is not my home. I'm in my renter's, one of my renter's home. She is on vacation right now, or I shouldn't say she's on vacation. She's a nurse, and she is off touring the United States and doing free clinics, helping out with free clinics. So she's an amazing person, and I'm quite proud to come over and help take care of her dog. She has multiple dogs, so you might see dogs wandering around in the pictures from time to time. One of them is a puppy. Normally they just come over and stay at my house, but one of them is a new puppy, and he is not, uh, he, he's only five months old, so he hasn't learned all the manners he should at this point in his life, so I may have to stop and go take care of him. Okay, pickling is very easy. If you can boil water, you can pickle. Uh, I have a lot of people who will be like, oh, I wish I could pickle like you do, and I'm like, if you boil water, you can pickle. It's really a simple thing to do. Uh, we pickle thistle stalks for a number of reasons. Uh, first thing is free food, free, yay! Because it, when prices of food go up, it's the poor that suffer. Um, this is this is just a free way of getting food. The second reason that we pickle thistle stalks is because it's really good for you. Uh, thistles is, is a medicinal. It is used to cleanse the system. Cleanse the system. When I was a little kid, I used to go out with my great aunt. My great aunt is who left me her house and her farm, which is what started me on living here in the valley when I came back from college. I live in her house now. When she passed away, she left it to me. And uh, uh, anyway, she was a healer, and she would go out and gather thistle stalks. And thistles are really good at helping to cleanse your system, cleaning things out. And she, I would always complain about it because I hated it because you know, they're pricky. And she would say things like, um, she'd say, well, they're prickly because they're for the prickly people who drink too much. That's how she always worded it. Uh, she used it to help people detox from um, alcoholism. Uh, so, or now she probably would use it for drug detox too. It helps just get all those toxins out of your system just as fast as possible so your body can start healing instead of spending more time just trying to get those toxins out. So it's really good, it's a really good blood clearer, um, system clearer, cleans out the liver, uh, which you know, a good chunk of your blood flows through your liver, and um, the, the pickling itself makes it a great digestion, digest, Ooh, see if I can speak today, great for digestion. The reason that we have pickles with our hamburgers is because meat is harder to digest, and so for a long time we knew to eat pickles with it. Um, we instinctively knew it, or we spiritually knew it, in my opinion, we knew it through a spiritual connection, uh, that eating pickles helped us digest. And uh, we just evolved into, that's what we like. We like to have something slightly fermented with our meat, because that's how we were raised. Um, or that's how we evolved into our taste buds, our, our modern day taste buds. Um, so it's really good for you. This, the third thing is, is um, it's a novelty that I find helps empower people. In the last few years, in the last about three years, more and more of the gatherings that I go to, and we always, you know, every, they're usually potluck gatherings and everybody takes some kind of food or different foods with them. Um, I'm finding that a lot of people are, are trying to take back their own power. Uh, see, nobody can take your power from you, but they can make believe, make you believe that they can. 
And so a lot of people are suddenly realizing they are, they are powerful beings. And every little thing they can learn to do makes them that much more powerful. And so they'll be over there and I'll be like, oh, here's some pickled thistles. And they'll be like, oh, really? Is it easy to do? And I'll be like, if you can boil water, you can pickle thistles. And they're like, well, great, you know. <laughs> and it's just one more thing because now they realize they can, just by what's out in the field, they can feed themselves. How powerful is that to know that you can provide nourishment for your soul, that you're not reliant on somebody else to take care of you. Um, so that's the novelty of it is just, um, it's, it's an empowering novelty. And the last thing is, is it's kind of a thumbing my nose at the establishment. Uh, in the state of Wisconsin, it is illegal for me to have thistles on my property. Um, it is actually, here where I live, it is illegal on two different levels. It's illegal on the state level and it's illegal on the county level. Um, it's in our state statutes of the what are called noxious weeds. Noxious is a legal term that means an unwanted weed. We do not want you to have it. And many agricultural states have this, and the reason it is is because modern agriculture is based on monoculture. Mono meaning one and culture meaning gathering. It's gathering of one. And in a monocultural field, they just want it to be one thing. So it's just uh, corn, or it's just soybeans, or it's just wheat. And they don't want your weeds in there. And so they have made it a law that says, I can't grow weeds in, on my land because all living things move. Plants do. A lot of people think that, oh, plants don't move. They sure do. If you've ever seen uh, thistle puffs of seeds go flying through the air on a windy day, on a warm windy day, you know <laughs> that plants move. And the farmers don't want those seeds moving over into their field. So they made it a law that says that I can't grow them on my land so it doesn't end up in their field. And it ticks me off a little bit because there is no law that says if they decide to put genetically modified crops on their side, and I don't want it on my side, if some of their pollen, genetically modified pollen, comes over and pollinates something of mine, they're not at fault. In fact, it's a copyright infringement, and I'm at fault. So if my weed seeds goes over onto their field, I'm at fault. And if their genetically modified pollen comes over onto my fields, I'm at fault. And so it kind of ticks me off a little bit. So this is kind of my way of kind of just thumbing my nose at the establishment and saying, I'm going to grow my food, any kind of food I want, and I choose to grow thistles. Come bust me for it. Um, right now, they aren't busting us for it, but a few years ago, they didn't bust us for selling raw milk. It was against the law, but mm, who cares? We're not going to do anything about it. Well, now they're doing stuff about it. A few years before that, it was against the law to grow hemp, but my fields, I, I have hemp fields that were put in in World War II because that was how we got our rope, and um, and nobody ever busted you for it. It might be illegal, but hey, if you got ditch, it's called ditch weed around here. If you got ditch weed growing out back, you know, whatever. Now they come and they tell you to burn your fields, um, and they basically threaten to do it if if they want. I've had it my fields threatened many times. Um, so, you know, there used to be other things that were illegal, but they let you do anyway, nobody really cared, and now they're not, and so I'm waiting for the day that uh, they really start cracking down on people for having noxious weeds in their garden, and when that happens, gosh, I hope, I hope at that point people say, so like something I can't really control, and you're going to bust me for it, um, and maybe there'll be a little bit more of an uprising, but right at this moment there isn't, so we're working with what we got. Uh, okay, as I said, Pickling things is really easy. So what we do is, the main thing you have to remember is we're going to use vinegar. And at this point, we're using distilled white vinegar from the store. Uh, if you make your own vinegar, you're going to want to know what your uh, what the acid level is. So if you're new to this, the best thing to do is just go out and buy yourself some uh, distilled vinegar, the white, uh, uh, white vinegar from the store. Um, watch for it to go on sale, and when it does, buy a lot of it because this stuff is amazing. It's got amazing cleaning abilities and um, is a preserver for food. And what we want to do is we want to have same equal parts equal parts water to equal parts um, vinegar. If you have the city water that's chlorinated, you're probably going to want to either filter it or um, uh, 
get uh, buy some water. I hope that you don't have to worry about that, but if you do, you do. Um, I have well water here, so that's what I'm doing. And then we're going to put this in, and from there on, it's up to you. However you want. I tend to like the dill flavor, so I put dill seed in it. Uh, this is dill seed from last year that I have. Um, I also have, I'm dehydrating onions as we speak, um, and so I have some dehydrated onion, onions from last year. Uh, so I'm going to put that in too. And then I am a garlic fiend, so there's very few things in this world that is not made better from garlic. So I have a few cloves of garlic that I'm going to smash. Um, I'm not going to really chop them up, but I'm going to really smash them hard and then just throw the whole clove into the jar. Um, now you can do it two different ways. You can, a lot of people will take and put all their spices into here. And then, uh, and, and then you're going to need some kind of salt. Now, um, for the most part, I'm going to say don't use iodine salt, salt that has iodine in it. If that's all you have, use it. The thing is, it's not going to affect the nutritional value. It's not going to affect the um, flavor at all. It's not going to affect how crunchy it is. What it does affect is the, um, the color. It can discolor your food. But if all you have is iodine salt, um, that's fine. And you can use... I, um, you can use sea salt, you can use, um, this is canning salt, because I buy canning salt. Canning salt is a lot of times cheaper, and you can use canning salt for anything that you can use other salt for.